Hey, Kim, I feel like I, I don't feel so good. I think I have internal slime fever. <laughs> I, I can help you with that. Hey, everybody, welcome to Nonsensicality. Wow. Get a little cabin fever going. Been, I, you know, I can tell. We've been inside. And, and the thing is, is I've been inside. A lot. I've been outside a lot, but not like in in around other people. Right. But I've been like in the elements, and so like today I've been cleaning my garage. So I have to apologize in advance. I already feel it. Did you hear that? That was a sniffle. That's gross. Kind of a snort and a sniffle. Well, I think I got that internal slime fever. You don't. But I was cleaning the garage out, and just the dust is making me bleh. And so I'm telling you, there's some slime internally going on. I don't have a fever. I check my temperature daily actually right now and I'm doing great. But uh, <laughs> you don't have internal slime fever. I have internal slime. Well, okay. It's that's, called snot. That's gross. <laughs> but anyway, if I sneeze, I apologize. If I have to snort, I apologize. Um, but so this gets me thinking though. And we're of course still, you know, gutting out this pandemic. It's going to you know, I believe great things are on the horizon, but until then, we, we need to do what we need to do. But it got me thinking about and it got you thinking about uh -huh. cure-alls. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So there was this whole history of quack doctors and, and medicine and traveling salesmen. You would always see it in those like those TV shows. Uh, from back in the day where yep. they would come up in their, their really fancy cover, their wagon with the, their sign on the side uh -huh. and they'd have a little podium and they'd usually have a stick of some sort that they're waving in the air and they're like, hey, step right up. We got what kids, what else? Yeah, you're going to get good. Yeah, that kind of thing. Oh, you're very good at and that. And then they would have plants in the audience who would like, you know. Yes. Pretend to be sick, like like they'd wheel them up in a wheelchair and then they'd drink the elixir and then boom. They're dancing. But that didn't really happen, right? That wasn't, that's not historically accurate. Well, okay. So there's some interesting things when you actually look into the history of quack medicine. And some of it, complete nonsense. Yeah. But some of it, you know, it, it, it did help with things, but, you know, the side effects were... Were worse. Oh, of course. Yeah. So I'm going to tell I'm you just, about it. I, thank goodness it doesn't happen anymore, essential oils. <laughs> what? I'm just glad that people don't do that kind of thing anymore and, and, and build people out of money, collodial silver. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just glad that that doesn't happen anymore because, yes. you know, we shouldn't feed We're on people. We're smarter than that We're now. smarter than that. And we don't need to be messing with people, <laughs> you know, letting them, them think. False hope. Yeah, false hope in some sort of elixir in a bottle. Right. Well, here we go. I'm going to talk to you about some of my favorite... Cure alls okay. from history. So they're they're not really in any particular order. Sometimes I'm gonna talk about products, sometimes uh -huh. I'm gonna talk about, you know, what's in the products. Uh -huh. All right, so here we go. Are you gonna talk about thieves oil? I hear good stuff about that. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. I'm not. I just think it's appropriately named thieves if you're selling it. Sorry. <laughs> I have a lot of friends that sell essential oil. I have my opinions. All right, Kim. Okay. Electric hairbrushes. Oh, those are great. Now, the funny thing is, is when you talk about the electric hairbrushes, it didn't actually um, plug in. It was like charged. Like you didn't recharge it. So it was, the device itself. It was magnetism. Yeah. Right. So you bought a hairbrush. Right. Now, Now, the guy, his name was... Dr. George A. Scott. You know, you put the word doctor in front of your name and everybody it immediately gives you credibility. Yeah. So he said that these hairbrushes were slightly magnetized and people bought them just to cure anything. Blood poisoning mm -hmm. and all of these things. Mm -hmm. And so then he decided, why stop with a hairbrush? I'm going to develop electric flesh brushes. And <laughs> Ouch. No, 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 just no. Something sounds, that just sounds like it's something, a uh, 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 Torture. But the magnetism in the God, brush would, would, would the cure words. you. Now, here's okay. why he's brilliant. Okay? Well, he, he, yeah, he duped people. That's no, why. no, 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 no. He got smarter. 
Okay. okay. All right. So he he's selling you on this electric brush, right? Right. And he's got you hooked, giving you all this promise, right, all the right, glitz right, right, and right, glamour. Right. But he would tell you, hey, now, this is one per person. If someone else uses it, it's going to demagnetize it and take the power away. Oh, so you need, it only works with your ions. Uh-huh. So you need yeah. one brush for, for every, every member in your, in your family. family. Yep. And then... And if it stopped working... Did someone else touch her to use right, it? Right, oh, right. they they took the You're power. You need to buy one, but for, uh -huh. you know, three easy payments of thirty nine ninety five. So you come can on, have another one. that was that was a, a touch. You know, that was clever. Yeah. yeah so that's, electric brushes. You know that the funny thing is the whole magnetism thing is not gone away. People still believe in the, how, the power of magnets and copper, whatever. You know that that's the funny thing. It's like. We've grown as a society, and we we think we've gotten smarter, but then we keep going back to all these uh, these things that we read about, and it's like, oh, well, there's actually people that still do things like that today, and magnets are, are one of those. That's well, the good doctor Scott had some instructions with with his brushes. It, it advised people of sedentary habits and weakened nerve powers will find it a valuable companion. So if you're lazy, there it is. It'll stop you from being lazy. Uh, yeah, but then he's hoping also that the people are too lazy to demand refunds if the brush stops working. So he went after the lazy people knowing they weren't going to get up and get a refund. The good Dr. Scott. Mm, okay, so. Good old Dr. Scott. Baldness, right? What? Uh, this feels a little personal. <laughs> so, no, it's not intended to feel personal. Okay. 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 So in the 19th century, men were losing hair just as much as they're losing hair today. And, you know, they they didn't enjoy that. No. So they no. wanted a cure. Yes. They wanted it fixed. Yes. So here we go. There's a tonic marketed as Hall's Vegetable Sicilian Hair Renewer. It promised to feed the starved roots uh -huh. of your hair and uh -huh. to destroy the bacteria that allegedly caused hair loss. Bacteria causing mm -hmm. the hair. Now, is this the same halls that gave us our cough drops? No. Or? Okay, so it's a different halls. No, 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 different halls. Wouldn't that have been funny? Because yes. it's like, we're still using his products today. No, different halls. Just not halls. on our but, scalp. So anyway, the ingredients came from an encounter. And, and they always have stories. Oh, that's that's the big part of the cell is the encounter. encounter. With a mysterious Sicilian uh, that gave Sicilian. Hall, you know, the secrets. And, you know, one of the ingredients... It can never be someone from your own country. No, it not. has to be a different country. It, it, it Cuz I mean, how are you going to verify? There's no no one's going to fact check if you go, you know, out to Especially if they're mysterious. Turkmenistan or whatever and it's like, yes, this this magi of Turkmenistan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the ingredients in this tonic, lead. Wow, that's good for your skin. <laughs> And your hair. <laughs> so it didn't work. But But they had lead poisoning to look forward to. Now here's a here's a funny note. Okay. Okay. Here is a sleight of hand trickery for the, the baldness community. So a competing baldness cure was Burnett's cocaine. Ah. No, no, no. He he performed a sleight of hand. He did okay, so it's really funny. So would he put wigs on people or something? And he's no, like no, no. he didn't actually rub add, the cocaine on your head. No, no, no. <laughs> he didn't add cocaine. That's oh. the thing. It was one of his product, one of his ingredients was rather coconut oil uh, spelled coca nut uh, oil. So the <laughs> cocaine came from the coca leaf. And so he was able to. The coca nut. Yeah, uh huh. Oh, so, wow. Little sleight of hand. I just figured he was keeping like the cocaine for himself. He had to justify the orders. I'm putting it in this remedy, no. I promise. No. So, I mean, yeah, it would have gotten. So, he was, it was just false advertising, bait and switch and everything. Oh, absolutely. Mm. He was the king of it and it didn't work. So. Which is funny, though, because like you'd see ads like for cocaine, like was an actual, like you could buy it over the counter uh -huh. for toothaches and, and things like that. And we're going to talk about that, too. Yeah, that's crazy. All right. You feeling thirsty? I am actually. I got a little pink lemonade right now, but I'm still okay. Thirsty. Well, you need some radioactive water. Of course, radioactive water. <laughs> again, again. Kid you not. This is going on nowadays. They're saying alkaline water cures cancer. I've seen it on Instagram. I've seen it on Facebook. This is not anything. I mean, like, <laughs> this is not dyed. And people are like saying that alkaline water is new. The new radioactive water. Okay, so radioactive water was, you know, the mineral the hot right, mineral right. springs and it was yeah. this huge boom hit well um 
So you could get radioactive water. Reputable mineral journals, medical journals, stated that radium slowed aging and cured insanity. Once the U.S. Surgeon General announced that radium could cure everything from malaria to diarrhea. The U.S. Surgeon General announced that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Radium could cure everything from malaria to diarrhea and (laughs) the quack doctors were off to the races. I got some radioactive uh, water. I just got to go microwave it real quick. Then, then you'll be good. So then what else you? they would sell radioactive water and then they took it a step further and made devices so you could do your own at home radio oh, water. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And so, you know, they they sold. I mean, it's just crazy. Radium was was added to beauty cream, toothpaste, earplugs. And it was all going swimmingly until the, you know, well-known users of this miraculous water started dropping dead and then yeah. you know it all kind of fell <laughs> fell apart. A little radiation poisoning. A little bit. Yeah, it was not a good it was not nice. <laughs> but it, it went really well for a while. Oh my goodness. I mean people I'll were stick buying to my it. alkaline water, thank you very much. <laughs> it's it's less bad for me. <laughs> okay, so when you think of quacks, yeah. You, you there's a phrase that you use all the time. Snake oil salesman. Snake oil. Yeah. Okay, now that's that what was, I call essential oil salespeople. Then. Now it was a real thing. So snake oil. So it was essential oil salespeople. No, no, no. So snake oil actually was a reputable cure for um, inflammation, and it was extracted. Now it was extracted from a certain snake. Mm. So Chinese water snakes, you could get the oil from those, and it, those snakes are rich in omega three acids. And it actually worked to treat inflammation and arthritis. So it's 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 an, because of the omega three. It's a good yeah. yes. Now, but fish oil has that and other things. Yes. Yeah. So that snake oil, I'm like quoting in the right. air to no one. People, but you, you can't see this. But she's <laughs> quoting air quotes right now. There's nonsense. Nah. There you go. Okay. So that actually worked, but then of course the copycats didn't have the special snake no, 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 no. and they started using oh just any snake any old snake rattlesnakes and but of course these didn't have the high omega concentrate three. of omega 3s yeah. dun 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 and but some salmon all you got to do is eat some salmon yeah well so because the snake oil was not working the way it was you know they added claimed. stuff to it didn't they of they did they stuff did. to take it up a notch like of laudanum and stuff did. right they i mean it was I mean, some of the snake oil actually didn't even have snake oil in it. <laughs> so that's like some of the juices you buy nowadays. It's like it's like fruit punch contains zero percent juice. It's uh-huh. like yeah. So because you know some of the snake oil didn't actually have snake oil in it, yeah. that's where the term kind of came to you know apply to shady salesmen. Right, because they weren't even really selling snake. Mm-hmm. It was a hundred percent. I mean, it was eel at best. But that was one that actually did. If it actually it, had some help because of the omega threes in it. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. Do you ever have to to think? Uh, yeah, I've got. Um, let, let, you could just say I'm royalty because I have like five crowns. All right, so I've had my share of toothaches. Okay. <laughs> you know, and then the toothaches are terrible, right? There's the pain and yeah, yeah, misery. I always think of the movie Castaway with Tom Hanks oh. when he has that tooth and it's starting to rot, and he has to take the the uh, ice skate and the metal part of the ice skate oh, and a rock. Oh, that scene. I hid, I hid under a blanket for that. That scene is okay, but Confession obviously time. he didn't yeah. If something scares me, yeah. Or it has the potential to scare me, yeah. I'll always watch with a blanket. When you hear the slow stringed instruments start playing, blanket. You, you get the blanket. Like as uh-huh. soon as you hear stringed instruments playing really slow and ominous, it's like boom. Blanket. Yeah. You can't even listen to Yo-Yo Ma without a blanket. No, I can't because that's not scary. But no, I mean, like there's TV shows that I'm watching right now that I I have to watch the blanket. I know. I'm watching them with you and I laugh every time because I'm like, that's so funny when that CGI monster jumped out. Stop it. I like the blanket. (laughs) But okay, so toothaches, you know, have been around forever. Toothaches are a, a, a problem. And that's the problem with teeth is there's just no regrowing them. Right. You only get the two. You know, you get your baby, then your adult ones, and then that's it. But go ahead. Well, okay. So there was actually tooth drops, toothache drops mm-hmm. that were invented, and it was based on some science. So here we go. Like the cocaine. You're gonna you're gonna learn some stuff here. I'm I'm ready to learn. Are I've you got ready? My, yes, I've got my notebook. They can't tell what I got. <laughs> you're taking. I notes. could be sitting here in my pajamas. 
I'm not because I actually got dressed to go out work in the garage, but yes. I could be in my pajamas and no one will know. All right, here we go. Here's some factoids for you. Factoids. In 1844, there was an ophthalmologist in Australia that discovered that cocaine solution added to the eyes would help decrease blood to the eye. Decrease and, the redness of them. And takes away pain. Mm. So eye surgeries were much easier oh, for the right, patient. Right, because right. Right, cocaine is the, the, the original use for that before it became an illegal drug was a numbing agent. Yeah. The A-I-N-E on anything, lidocaine. Uh, benzocaine, all those means they're like there's kind of that antiseptic. Yeah, so it, so it, it demobilized the eye. It those. made eye surgeries right. much better. Right. And so then people started thinking, well, huh, what else can I use this amazing stuff for? Yeah, when people started getting nosebleeds, they're like, oh, what can we do with it there? Well, toothaches, depression, sinus there you go. issues, there lethargy, you go. alcoholism. I mean, it was the cure-all. It was in a tonic <laughs> lozenge. I cured powder. my alcoholism too. I started doing cocaine. <laughs> they even put it in cigarettes. I mean, this wow. was the it. Yeah. Now, and fun fact, because a lot of people, they don't use it in whenever they make the movies a lot of times, but Sherlock Holmes was known for using cocaine. Uh-huh. Because that was kind of an when opium. it was a, a big, an opium. And so he was kind of, uh, even though he was a genius, he was kind of a drug addict. Yeah, I mean, Allen's cocaine tablets could be purchased for 50 cents a box. Mm. And it offered relief from everything from hay fever, throat troubles, nervousness, headaches, and sleeplessness. Essentially, it would numb things and you wouldn't feel the symptoms a lot of times, basically. Yeah. Is you didn't on. need a doctor's prescription and it was even sold in Sears and Roebuck catalogs. That's that's funny. Yeah, I'm sure that's where I've seen the little because you see the little snippets of stuff. And I'm sure it's like the catalog. Now, here's some funny things for you. Okay. By 1902, yeah. there was an estimated 200,000 cocaine addicts in the U.S. Oh, alone. my goodness. That may be more than there is now. <laughs> they were all curing their ailments. But they, they were not alcoholics anymore. <laughs> they were just cocaine addicts. So, you know. So That's speaking of, of drugs, heroin was toted oh, yeah. to cure cough. Yeah. Bayer pharmaceutical. Yeah. Uh, they would put it in their still, in their aspirin. Still active today, Bayer, yeah. Yeah. I mean they heroin found it in your aspirin. Five times more effective. Yeah, it's effective. <laughs> And, and addictive. Well, but they were, because everyone was like morphine, morphine, morphine. They're yeah. like, no, try heroin. It's less addictive. <laughs> yeah, heroin is like highly addictive. Oh, my so goodness. So Bayer this began is... advertising heroin laced aspirin in 1898. They marketed towards children suffering from oh sore goodness. throats, cough, and cold. <laughs> Their advertising showed children eagerly reaching for the medicine with moms giving their sick kids heroin on a spoon. <laughs> wow. And that's the generation that la later went on to fight World War I and World War II. All right. <laughs> but, it turned out all right. I mean, but hey, those some kids of our, were Some of happy. our veterans, you know, they were able to fight the war. Without any pain, probably, because of all the heroin. Well, and it's funny, because here's another thing for, you know, if your ailment is crying babies, like your babies are just... Oh, there's a lot of those. Okay. The the prescribed treatment was opiates. That's another drug. I mean, you know, <laughs> let's give them some opiates and they will lure babies. In fact, the famous one was called Mrs. Winslow's Soothing Syrup. It lulled babies to sleep and silence. Yeah, and it practically <laughs> killed them. But you know. actually, baby is—I mean, it was Mrs. Winslow's was um, was known for killing babies. Yeah, yeah. So See, now, now, and you hear, and that's the fun thing about it. Today, you still hear that. You know, now it's like uh, I don't know how many times when babies are teething, people are like, "You just need to get some Jack Daniels and rub it on their gum." You know what I mean? They're like whiskey on the gums is a big thing. And, yeah, and like giving your kids whiskey and all that. So but it it's was, better than opium. It was morphine. It was widely dispensed for teething. And in 1911, oh they actually called it the syrup um, that it was a baby killer. But it didn't it didn't stop it from oh being sold. In fact, it kept going until 1930. Wow. So, hey, soothe those babies right to sleep. Oh, my goodness. Permanently. All right. At least my alkaline water doesn't kill me. That's true. Have you ever su f suffered from uh, being overweight? Just have an, an you, extra pound Again, you, you're going with the baldness. Now you're going with the overweight. I'm sorry. I'm in quarantine. I can't get out much. All right? So I put on a few pounds. I've got a We're cure. buying less. We're buying more long life food because we're just going to be in it for, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I've got a cure. I need to go run around the backyard for a Okay. Bit. What's my cure for my overweight baldness? 
Tapeworms. Well, of course. They sold tapeworm tablets, <laughs> and it was mail order eggs that you could take, and you could eat as much as you want, whatever the you want. Would, would eat it. And then wash it all down with some tapeworm eggs, and voila, the parasite eats away all the food you've just eaten. And then you'd end up with a 30 foot long tapeworm that lives yeah. in you for decades. Yeah, because they don't go away. Yeah. I think my grandma, my but dad's be mom, thin. I think my grandma had a tapeworm. And what was funny, because like here, this was the, the, the phrasing in my, when growing up, you know, my grandma would eat a lot and my dad would be like, I think you got a tapeworm. And my grandma's response was, well, if I got one, I need to feed it. Oh my word. <laughs> that, was, that was some Rankin wisdom right there. If you got a tapeworm, you might as well feed it. So were there really tapeworms? So they, they were real tapeworms and they mm -hmm. were really giving them. Now it would either, the, the eggs would either be ineffective when it showed up or your order or, would never come, but you know, there right. it was. Or they would, and you'd have a 30 foot tapeworming. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, I mean, but hey, let's put this parasite in your body so you can be fit. Yes. That reminds me of that. But there's an episode of The Office where they're all trying to lose weight and Kelly thinks she takes a tapeworm and it's yep. just not at all a tapeworm. <laughs> so okay. still, still going on today. So swamp root. Okay, Swamper, remember yeah. how you said you had the uh, I had the, the internal the slime internal fever. slime fever. Yeah, it's feeling better now that I've been indoors. I'm not so s slimy on the inside. Good. Anymore. Well, it's the funny thing is, is that was an invented disease. So Dr. Kilmer's swamp root <laughs> could um, could Dr. cure you. Dr. Kilmer. Yeah, and it, I mean, <laughs> it also promoted the flow of urine. But um, yeah, it was. So if uh, you had kidney stones, maybe that's a good thing. You might need to. Yeah, know. its most effective ingredient was alcohol. So you can Isn't imagine always, how popular some of I these mean, are. I mean, NyQuil's most effective ingredient is alcohol. I know. Now, here's my favorite one. This all is right. the last one. This is my favorite one. All right. You know how you, you come up with a product, and it's all about who you can get to endorse you? Oh, yeah. You want the big names endorsing you. want the celebrities yeah. to wear your brand, to yeah. buy your products, to drink your soda, go on Instagram yeah. holding your thing. Yeah. Okay. That's not a new concept. Oh, no. So... This is a, this is back in 1863. Um, it is a, basically a red wine and cocaine mixture. I can't remember hearing about that. Yeah. It's known as Vin Mariani and it was unleashed to the world. It was invented by a French chemist and it's basically red Bordeaux wine ground up with coca leaves and the wine sucked the narcotics, the narcotic substance from the coca leaves and so basically you had six milligrams of cocaine per ounce of wine. It was wow. a cure-all. Yeah. But here's the funny thing about it. So yeah. you have this cure-all wine cocaine mixture. Yeah. That the Pope endorsed. Oh. Did he do communion with the it? Tell queen, me he didn't do communion The Queen with of it. England. Oh my goodness. Endorsed it. Doctors, actors, writers. I mean, it was crazily endorsed the pope awarded it the vatican gold medal oh my goodness how do you get a vatican gold medal i don't know but this did it apparently he put some cocaine in wine and i mean i mean there was newspaper ads with the pope's image sponsoring <laughs> the wine and i mean they made they made it big little That's red awesome. wine little cocaine well, mix it together were there any drawbacks or did it just fizzle you know, like, did it, people start dying from that? Or no, obviously it had a, a lot of backing. The um the guy that invented it died, and so it kind of fizzled uh, once. He didn't. I mean, I guess it was his. It was genius. probably his original secret recipe, and he didn't tell anybody. Yeah, his genius marketing and his you know take it to That's the grave crazy. recipe. But it's crazy. You know, hey, if you're, you're if you need some some cure alls. There you go. I have a whole list of them for you. Yeah, that, that's the thing, though. Like, I, I've i kind of made fun of a lot of them. Uh, You've made but, fun of all of them. But, like, I'm talking about today's remedies. You know, that <laughs> the alkaline water, the essential oils. Now, I know we have essential oils, and I like the smells of the oils. I'm not putting a lot of faith in them because, like, there's some that are just like, well, you put three drops of this and two drops of that, and then you rub it on your forehead, and then this will cure your blindness or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's not right. That is, that is, it's just, the, the thing is, is you, your, your nose is actually the quickest way to get to your brain. So the essential oils, you know, are, can, can please the smell can help because it goes to your brain quickly. 
But I think most of that is placebo effect. I think Probably. most of what you're doing, and now I'm ruining it for everybody. They're like, well, now it doesn't work. No, they're not going to believe me anyway. They believe in their oils. They believe in their oils. But it's like, <laughs> you know, it, it's it's one of those things is like, I, I do believe in the placebo effect. Like, I believe that a lot of times our mind is stronger than our bodies. And our mind can tell us we're feeling great whenever, you know, we take whatever the cure all is. And so and that's been proven. The placebo effect's been right. you know, proven, to, you know, that people think they're getting better or they, they really do get better just because they're believing it enough to where they get better. And I also believe, obviously, in, in like faith and, and that. And so but it's just funny that that, you know, you, you still even though you would think that that day is gone it is, I would say it's bigger than ever because of social media. I mean, like not just essential oils, I pick on them a lot, but you know, like the, the whole colloidal silver, there was, you know, recent, you know, issues in the news where people were saying that got rid of the coronavirus or prevented it. And they had a, a cease and desist order on them. And so it's like, there's still these people. And then, like I said, alkaline water, I'm a big fan of conspiracy theorists. And so if I, if I look into a lot of those just for fun, you're going to find all those like well, snake oil sure. type things. And so alkaline water, it's hilarious how they're like, this will cure cancer. Doctors won't don't want you to know that because they want to make money on you. But this will cure your cancer. Just drink alkaline water if you get cancer. I mean, like that's as bold as some of it gets. And it's just it's just ridiculous. Um, and then, yeah, you're going to see some positive results because your mind is going to make a lot of that work. Because, you know, I just think effect. you need to take two ounces of swamp root. Oh, my God. And have a nap and <laughs> you'll be fine. Some soothing syrup and, you know. Yeah. It, it'll be good. Just <laughs> rub some snake oil on it. You'll be grand. Yeah. It'll be fine. Just yeah. And then have a glass of cocaine wine, apparently. <laughs> you're fine. And the thing, the funny thing is, is about these is because it has so many drugs and yeah. you're not going to feel terrible anymore. Well, that, that's the thing. It's so like high. most of these are numbing agents and they're going to make you feel you're good for a, feel a lot. But then when it wears off. You That's more. when your addiction starts to kick in. And like things like laudanum, that was a big thing. And that was essentially alcohol and opium mixed together. Um, and people would like, you like from probably made famous by the movie Tombstone, like more recently, like if you ever saw Tombstone, yeah. his wife was addicted to it. And like she was constantly taking laudanum and it was just essentially a narcotic and alcohol put together and, and like it, highly addictive because as soon as it wore off. Well, that's why these, I mean, they were cocaine millionaires because yeah. they were behind these cure-all elixirs. Yeah. And because people were addicted, they yeah. bought them by yeah. the truckload. Yep. That's crazy. That's funny. But yeah, I just, I think the funniest part, the, the biggest nonsense I'm getting out of this is it has not ended. I mean, like there's still so many out there and a lot of the, you know, the, the, the magnet bracelets and things like that, because you're the iron in your blood is not aligned apparently. Yeah. You need so. to, you really need to, to get that looked at. Oh, but you know, I, I, I think it's, you know, we all want to, we all want to improve our condition. We all want to get better. We all want to feel better. I'm, you know, I'm in my forties now and I feel things in my body that I didn't used to feel. <laughs> And, and so it's like, man, if I had something that, but a lot of your aromatics do help because it just, it draws blood to that area, you know, like your menthol will draw blood to, to, you know, like Bengay, you know? Right. And so there's things that there is some topical things that work. There are some things that, you know, aromatic that work for a time, but they, uh, I do not think any of them are a cure for it, but they can help. Well, you know, vanity is not a new condition. Oh no. And... You know, I mean, back that's something we could do an entire episode on is like just beauty things uh, from the past, because, I mean, they would do some crazy things, usually involving animal poo for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> 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 it's like if, if you want to look pretty, put the ugliest thing on the planet on your face. You know, it's usually something like that. Even that's... mascara. Mascara. Where, where did it come from? It's Guano. That. Poo. Oh my goodness. Bat poo. Is that all you got for me? Is that the That's the, all I have for you. That was That's it. That was great. Cure alls. Cure alls. Hey, if nothing else, this podcast cured. That's your, right. You know, that's the thing. Listening to this podcast will cure whatever uh, whatever ails you. I know. It helped you laugh a little bit. Yeah. Laughter, as they say, is the best, is the best medicine. medicine. And in fact, that's biblical. That's I'm start, biblical. I'm a very hard does good that. like a medicine. Yeah. For nineteen ninety five, yeah. you can get your very own laughter elixir. That's awesome. I love that. 
I love that. You know, it, it's 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 liquid ear elixir. It goes straight to your ears from the podcast. You don't even have to buy it. Just get on Patreon and sponsor us. <laughs> that's that's what you're gonna do. You just get on Patreon, sponsor us. And you'll feel better. You'll feel better instantly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all the time we have. Thank you, Kim, for that enlightening. Trip oh, it, down. it was enlightening. Yeah. And, and now we know, you know, what can cure our, our ailments. Yeah, swamp root. And apparently we know how to get rid of the internal slime disease, internal slime fever. Internal slime fever. Yeah. I call that allergy season is what I call it. But, but. you know, I mean, if you're going to sell an elixir, make up a disease give it a good to name. go along with it. That's true. You give it the disease and then they don't even know. They had they it. I don't know if it's real. You know, the truth is, though, is like the the cosmetic and the um, the health and beauty, the cleaning your body industry, uh -huh. the soap industry, they, they did the same thing. And they were successful. They're like, you're stinky. Nobody's going to want to be around you. You need to use our soap. People hadn't used soap or deodorant or toothpaste for thousands of years. But now, they, they, like, who was it? Uh, one of the one of the toothpaste companies invented the term gingivitis. It wasn't a real term. They invented it so that they could tell you you got bad or not gingivitis. I'm sorry, halitosis. Halitosis. They told you that that's not a real word. And they said you have halitosis. Aww. That's why your husband isn't kissing you goodnight. Oh. You need our toothpaste. Toothpaste is the cure you for need, so many things. It wasn't toothpaste. It was Listerine mouthwash. Whoa. That's what it was. Listerine mouthwash. Invented the term halitosis. It's all coming back. I saw an episode of Adam Ruins Everything. Remind me. But anyway, Listerine invented the term halitosis to sell Listerine. And guess who's still around today selling Listerine and using the term halitosis? Listerine. Is. <laughs> Listerine is yeah. selling Listerine. Probably Procter & Gamble or some other mother company <laughs> now. But yeah. So it's funny because it's like, that. yes, with the cure-alls, that was one thing. And, and most people were, you know, they debunked a lot of that. But people are still like, they're telling you. That you you know you're stinky. No one wants to be around you. You need to buy our product. To be fair, though, if you're stinky, I really don't want to be. Yes, around but you. nothing that a, a shower itself won't cure. Usually, you know, a shower. And I'm not saying don't wear deodorant because you know that is in, in my mind one of the better deodorant. inventions. Uh, you know, as I've just come in from cleaning out the garage, I'm like, I yeah, I could definitely yeah. use some of that. But the, the the whole my the biggest thing I would say is the the, the bathroom wipes. Now we talked about that before. Is like, come on. But I, I like we, the little bear we, dancing around. <laughs> we're gonna sing the Charmin Clean song again. It, it makes me laugh. <laughs> All right, it's time to go. We're done. We're we done. can't. We can't do this anymore. Thanks for listening. Bye -bye. Have a great day.